Hey guys, and welcome back to episode number nine, which is act nine here. And we're currently on the run, at least we skipped certain parts because this is the part here, the Blood Aqueducts, the start of act nine, where you are basically speed leveling. And this is exactly what Ty is doing here. So we skipped a bunch of this part because he was leveling, I think he was like level 56, 57 somewhere once he killed Lunaris Solaris. And now he's going up to like 62, 63. So we're going to see the last uh, two runs here, or one and a half runs. Uh, and then we just keep on going because uh, watching an hour of Blood Aqueducts run, or not an hour, but just like symbolized, so. symbolized, uh, <clears throat> Because we're just going to save up some time, but actually you're just going to run this map. And once you hit the uh, the waypoint or the, uh, the town, you control click on the waypoint and you get like an, um, a menu where you can make a new zone. Because usually it takes like up to 15 minutes, I think. Uh, so monsters will respawn and you can skip that. If you could just hold down control click, click on the waypoint and then just make a new zone or sequence and all the monsters will respawn. You can just uh, keep on uh, going. Yep. So, um, I mean, the first thing I want to mention is that um, people usually call me uh, Tai Tai in the community. Tai is usually reserved for Tai 23, God Gamer. Uh, bless his heart, going on the uh, Chad Lightman journey. journey but uh, yeah, I'm just a virgin Tai Tai. Um, going along with that note, though, yeah, we just farmed Blood Aqueducts um, anywhere for around like 15 to 20 minutes or so. Uh, just trying to get from level 54, around level 54 to around level 62 or so. so we gain about eight levels. Um, we're looking for items to shore up our resistances. We're looking to fix our suffixes on our flasks. So that includes having bleed immunity, um, like an instant life flask of some kind, whether that be bubbling or seething. You can see that I'm still using, uh, I think it's level 42 flask here, just because I didn't, didn't get a bubbling quite yet. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to fix up everything so that we're map ready right around now because you'll watch and notice that x9 and 10 are super quick after we farm and sorry about that i ty and fun fact right. i actually had to call you ty ty anyways in the video titles and in the description to everything all your your name is ty ty killer but as soon as i put killer somewhere in youtube you know i get like <laughs> whoa demonetized dude as well yeah and the, the videos will not get shown that often because you know having killer or something bad words basically on the title or something uh yeah it's not that good to have yeah uh, when i was a kid i wanted to be called tai tai but tai tai was taken in whatever games i was playing so i was like what well, would sound cool and i just had a killer to the end of it but it's just something done something silly uh, and i've stuck with it through the years yeah that's how nicknames came across <laughs> yep all right this but here you be... can see that uh yeah, this should be the last one that we do. Um, I'm looking. So one extra thing that I do when I'm farming is I make sure to grab five of each type of life flask or mana flask that I need. Um, and I try to vendor them. Uh, so I don't do it here. But you'll notice that later on, I will go back and I will vendor those five. I'm holding on to them so um, I can get the suffix or the prefix, actually, that allows me to keep regenerating mana even while I'm using, uh, even when I'm capped on mana. The new one the they way added, that... yeah. Yep, the brand new one they added. Just because the way that uh, Miner works right now is um, you reserve most of your mana from auras, and then you actually reserve mana from the uh, from the mines themselves. And so your mana pool's super low, so you want to keep throwing mines, keep throwing mines, uh, detonate, keep throwing mines, but uh, your mana caps out really quickly with some of these, uh, these mana flasks. Um, I'll always pick up the magic uh, divine life flasks as well, and I'll pick up normal ones uh, so I can transmute them. That way I can hopefully get a bubbling prefix. That's one of the best things to look out for. Bubbling is the one that gives you instant re or uh, instant life, basically. Uh, it's half instant and half later. Um, seething is really good, but you need a high life pool for seething to be uh, optimal. <laughs> in my opinion, at least. Seething uh, yeah. was the faster region or... Some uh, seething is instant. All instant. One is one all instant, the other one is 50% instant. Okay, yeah, okay, my yep. my bad here. That's all right. Uh, yeah, typically for uh, for life pools, you're going to look for around uh, 2400 or so. Here I only have 2200 effective HP, but it's fine. Uh, our res is looking pretty good, um, and I'm feeling pretty confident in it. Uh, I 
don't think I ever actually managed to get the prefix that I'm looking for the entire run. I think I used like 20 to 30 alterations for it. Um, here, this is an important thing to know. I stop for the uh, the betrayal so that I can activate it on uh, maps that I want later on. Now, we won't do any mapping in this run, but on a leak start, I would go out of my way to do uh, the betrayal encounter. And they also give a shitload of experience, which is what I uh, found mm -hmm. out. Every time you talk to one of those guys and uh, betray them or whatever, every time you hit that button, you see that your experience is kind of exploding here. Yep, exactly. And, and if you have some betrayal layout where you have like, I personally, I never do syndicate, so uh, at least the um, the master, so the board never resets and I just make everybody trust it. So they're all lined up in green. So every time I find a syndicate account where I have like four syndicates and it's like a lot of loot and a lot of experience as well. Mm hmm. But yeah, we just we just want to make sure that we can uh, we can activate it on the tier fives that we want. Sometimes we get a little bit unlucky and you know we forget something and we can't talk to June. But thanks to this, we're able to uh, to activate it on our maps in the updated Atlas system. And you already are again abusing Einhar, not caring about the beast you want to hunt. You just want to have the extra yep. juicy DPS because he's actually doing mm -hmm. a lot of DPS. Yep. So take that into account every time you see Einhar click on him, so he follows you and just helps you killing stuff. Mm -hmm. This recipe is also very useful. It's spell damage rank three. It's a little bit pricey, but if you find uh, you know, the most amazing wand in the whole wide world, then maybe it's worth it. I think rank so three is the three chaos or something. Something like that. But here I opt to uh, to go ahead and grab uh, the mana flask, selling five to one, uh, just so I can get uh, the same item back. The way it works is that um, if you sell three flasks to the same tier, you'll get a higher level of flask. Um, but with these flasks, um, if you sell five magic items, you'll get back one magic item unidentified of the same base type. Or, and it works the same with rare items. So if you mm -hmm. sell five rare belts, five rare leather belts, you'll get back another rare leather belt unidentified. Basically what you want to... And hoping for uh, that one uh, prefix mod that you didn't got yep. but still wanted to have. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it with the, uh, the life flask as well, typically. Now you're searching the Stormblade, something I love to do as well. I always find the waypoint and everything, but never the Stormblade. <laughs> or I find the Stormblade mm -hmm. and I can't find the waypoint. <laughs> right. Either way. Typically, uh, in speedrunning, we'll skip the uh, Shakira boss. So it's, uh, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone just to, to go around and find this. I think my video here just crashed. Hello? Oh. Seems good to me. All right. Oh, it's crashing no, here. Just... Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh no, it was just my uh, my game froze. Yeah. Okay. We're back on track now. Yeah, league start simulation. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it always happen. I mean, if, if it can happen on land. Here I kind of mess up a little bit. Uh, I touch the wrong person, grab the wand, uh, and then I forgot to talk to... Uh, to uh, Pataris again, so I forgot to get the, uh, the little storm bottle. But again, that's just because uh, typically, if I'm on a leak start, I don't do this just so I can get my my you know first to enter whatever map. Uh, but if if you're on a normal leak start, uh, you would go ahead and uh, probably either do this here or do it later. I mean, it's extra skill point. I mean, the boss yeah. is a little bit cheaty though, depending on your DPS. But hey, we're minor; we don't care about bosses. We just one shot them. Right. The biggest issue on uh, the Scorpion is just how long the phases take. Uh, you know, once we get to the, the Scorpion, they just it just takes a really long, long time for her to phase out. Did you ever find out what they mean with this treasure room that you can enter here? <clears throat> um. So the treasure room is called like the vaults or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when you fight, uh, it's it's blocked off here in Act Nine. But if you fight the Syndicate Mastermind. It's actually in that same zone. It's just like within the vaults. So that's where um, the final boss of the syndicate resides. Okay. Hmm. Got a mid passage here, just dodge everything. Uh, yep, you're just trying to move inventory around. Uh, what I do here is um, a little inventory trick where I prepare uh, items in like a couple columns. Just what I want to uh, to stash away when I go back to town. So I'll have like a, a section of my inventory of like, this is what I want a vendor. Um, so you can see the wand and the Black Swiss is what I want a vendor. What I want to stash away is all those div cards, the maps and everything, uh, just so I have more inventory space. Uh, and what I want to keep is going to be in the left-hand side of my inventory. 
I opt to hold on to uh, all my currency and all my essences just because you never know when you're going to need them. Uh, certain things, though, can go away. You know, you're not going to use an Exalted Orb in your run. You're not going to use a Chaos Orb in your run. So you can you can go ahead and stash those away, typically. But um, early on, especially in the earlier acts, it's nice to know how many transmutes, how many alterations you have, because those are what you need to, to buy uh, gems with. Gems and so on, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there she goes down. Beautiful, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to follow the same concept of not talking to get our skill point, uh, just so we can uh, go ahead and grab the other skill point here and get them both knocked out at the same exact time. How was it actually in Betrayal League when those dudes spawned? Because they were like a little How bit naughty it? when Betrayal League was relieved. They, I mean, the Syndicate members got nerfed like three or four times already. But I imagine like, I remember the first days when they just came the assassination and they just one shot you and you couldn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, It was annoying because we didn't know what they did and the numbers that they did were pretty high. Same with like, kind of like Legion in a way. Um, but for the most part, um, as far as racing is concerned, Legion was one of the best races uh, for mapping just because you would always get those huge chunks of XP uh, in maps. And the higher level the syndicate, uh, the higher X or the more XP you get as mm -hmm. well. But coming back to the boss fight here on the Scorpion Vasiri, I don't know, like Shakari, Shakari is the name, yeah. Okay. Uh, it takes up some very nice practice how you did that. Uh, like you know that you cannot fast forward this run. You always have to wait until she digs in. Uh, moves around and comes up and then you need to be aware of your position so she just digs in again mm -hmm. and just keeps on moving and you're doing it so greatly perfectly while well, you're taking all your time you need to make your inventory and so on this is a thing you need a lot a lot of practice doing that just knowing exactly what when she will do what so you are safe basically it's actually super great to watch thank you um i still have quite a bit to way uh way to go before i'm perfect or anything uh, but a lot of these fights, uh, especially in PvE one, they're just gonna be, um, you know, dodge around, move around the skill, move around the boss. Kind of like how in Dark Souls, you'll just uh, sit in the the boss's butt and just, you know, just stay there basically, so it can't hit you. So you're now going to kill the boss as well for the extra skill point, I assume, or do you yep. just? I mean, we're overloaded, right? So we we did the Blood Aqueduct farm. Your gear is kind of good now. You're over leveled, mm -hmm. basically, so it's actually safe to do whatever you want to do. Still mapping, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, here is an interesting decision. So I have uh, four link gloves that dropped. I decided to throw an essence on them. You know, it'd be nice uh, to have some more flexibility and where my gems go. But my current gloves are just so much better um, that it would be it would not be worth it for me to uh, to grab a scour. Use that on the new on the four link gloves. Grab another essence and maybe try for it. So uh, we have to cut our losses and just assume that we're we're probably not going to get a nice pair of four link gloves. Yeah, but the ones you found, like the fifty life gloves, I think if I remember correctly, yep. they were like so good. Yeah, they're really good. Um, but it's nice to have more flexibility in your sockets. So um, like if I find a, a better helmet, yes. for example, right now, uh, then I wouldn't be able to replace it because that's where my four link is at at the moment. Uh, if I find a better chess piece, I can't use it, uh, that new chess piece because that's where my two blue, two green is at right now. Mm. So it's it's little things like this where you want to have some flexibility in gear, but if the uh, if the stats on it are really, really bad, then you're obviously not going to be replacing your gear. And you hopefully. keep on going with picking up the mana flasks until you would finally get it in both like yep. crafting, spending your alterations. But it's always like, at what point you don't need alterations anymore? Uh... For speedrunning, I would say you don't need alterations. Like, like you still need alterations. Like, I would want a bubbling divine life flask of uh, staunching. So it's like half instant, half later. Um, it would be bleed immunity. Mm -hmm. But in speedrunning, we only care about uh, the bubbling portion of it. Uh, for mapping, though, you would love to have uh, the second portion. So I should actually use the other flask that has bleed immunity on it. Because uh, we're about to approach belly and belly's really scary. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we can't get the ideal flask we want, and that's where the alterations will come in in mapping. Getting pranked. <laughs> yeah, that's a good 
so much currency wasted. I mean, if you're lucky, you get it on the first hand and just imagine you're uh, one of the first Quicksilver Flask and you're like, I just go for it. I just spam like my five alterations that I had and you get the uh, Adrenaline Quicksilver Flask. In the greater good, if you're doing that in Act 2 or so, uh, mm -hmm. and you get it, how much time would it actively save you through the, the course until mapping? It's actually insane, because uh, it's still a 30% increased movement speed throughout the yeah, entire it's like process. Equipping, uh, it's like equipping 30% MS, uh, 80% of the time or so, just because, you know, there are some downtimes on the Quicksilver. Uh, but for the most part, it's like, it's just pretty... Uh, it, it's a nice time save. I would say it saves... I would say it saves... Uh, Probably about five minutes, like a minute per act, about. Mm. But you're usually running forward. around with two quicksilvers, but you stop doing that. Is there any? Uh, yeah. So at this point, um, the reason why I do that is so that um, we don't need to have two quicksilvers because we're killing mobs faster than we were before, which means that we're gonna have more uptime on our quicksilver flask uh, a decent portion of the time. On top of that, we want to have more utility flasks, so it's nice to have a. Uh, you know, the the Jade or Granite, uh, the Silver Flask, the Quicksilver, the Man of the Light Flask. Um, we can't really opt to, uh, to switch out any of those. Possibly the Silver Flask, but it's like, why would we switch out the Silver Flask for another Quicksilver that isn't going to be used all the time, when a Silver Flask will always give us Onslaught for a little bit of extra movement speed. Basically the time when you are uh, picking up the Ice Cycle Mines, just because it has so much more clear speed than the, uh, the first mine that you... Uh, so Icicle Mines are actually a uh, level 12 requirement, Pirate Class Mines is a level 28 requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually switch out the second Quicksilver when we're in Act 5 and we grab the Silver Flask after getting to... Because uh, it acts after... like a, another Quicksilver, yeah. to be honest. Yep. Mm -hmm. So guys, get ready for a sequence of one-shotting. Unless it's Maligaro I... or this dude. Yeah, Maligaro has... can't get one-shotted, but... Badly. Uh, and I don't think this is the run where I insta-phase uh, the final boss either, unfortunately. Oh god, look at this uh, FPS drops. <laughs> yeah, dude. I uh, think spiked pretty hard. That's why you want to have the invisible MTX. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, uh, Path of Exile is kinder poorly coded in a lot of things. Because even if you have the yeah. best of the best PCs, sometimes you're just dropping so many frames and it's going up and yeah. down, so... Unfortunately, optimization isn't a priority, it seems. So here we have to use Icicle Mines, just because we only need to fight uh, Maligaro across the entire arena, because he keeps spawning ads. But on the other ones, you'll see that I use uh, Pirate Class Mines. It's like your strong single target. I mean, Ice Cycle Mines isn't bad either for single target, but Pyro Class is just a bit better, I guess, for immobile mm -hmm. targets. Yep. And if you can get a nice uh, chain detonation sequence going, then uh, it's going to be a, a good time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that I can just never lucky dude. Rip the currency? Hey, I could sing you a song about ripping currency. I know that feeling. <laughs> and here, not hard to just one shot her without the face with the stupid portals. Yeah, um, so if you don't know, in that fight there, you can actually stand behind the pillars and her scream won't attack you. Unless you're, you're right here, having... And, and, and... No, I don't think I managed. Oh, I did. Oh, you did, you did. Oh, wait. Perfect. Nope, I didn't. Wait. I didn't have the exit. She's super low health and wow. because I portaled out... Because I portaled out, a, uh, she's invisible, so I can't see you when she's targetable. But that's just unlucky, you know? That's like two ad phases Almost here. Two. Yeah. I managed to get her here, but yeah, typically but... you'll just portal out. This is basically now just 10 seconds basically wasted on that part just because you have a failed prediction or just being super unlucky. If just one of those uh, balls would have like crit or so, you would have saved another uh, 10 seconds here. Yep. Uh, typically after fighting this boss, we'll portal out just because we can take the waypoint from Act 9 uh, to the waypoint in Act 10. And if you take the boat um, from Lily, then you're actually quite far away from the exit to the zone. So that's why we waypoint out here. But that's going to be for Act 9. 
And this is what you uh, encountered. You were like, oh, she's dead. Instantly one shot it, go back. Act nine, you want to go to act 10? Oh, wait, it's not there. Oh, shit, she's yeah. still alive. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my thought process. Unfortunate. Oh. But yeah, guys, uh, that's it for act nine. And I'm looking forward to the last act, to act 10. Uh, and then we're going to see how he's going to approach Diki Tower and what would be the next steps afterwards. So guys, thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.